How are you doing guys? My name is Micah and this is going to be the 10th tutorial in the 2D iPhone game programming series. We're going to be covering um, actually positioning these ground elements so that they are next to each other as they generate so we'll have a continuous world as well as hopefully get to some of the obstacle generation as well. So first things first we need to get those ground nodes um, loading up next to each other. So go into the ML world generator implementation file uh, in the generate method, we are going to go to the grounds position and we're going to set the grounds position to the from zero to the self.currentGround x property. Now, um, as you can see, when we actually loaded up the generator, we made the current ground x equal to zero. So if we run this right now, it's going to be the same exact thing as we had before, it's just gonna load up the ground at x equals zero. Now to actually make them go next to each other, we wanna make it so every single time the generate method is called, it keeps track of that last x value. So at the end of the generate method, we're gonna do self.currentGroundX plus equals ground.frame.size.width. So now it's going to add um, a whole width of that ground every single time we do the generate method. So if we run this, we're gonna see that um, three of those ground nodes are actually loaded up right next to each other because in the populate method, we had that generate method run three times. So as you can see, I just clicked. Um, he's moving forward right now, but you can't really see because everything's kind of homogenous and green. And now we finally got to the end of the ground, um, the three ground nodes and the hero fell off the side of the scene. So um, before we make the ground completely continuous, we're actually going to add in the obstacles. Um, so let's do that. So we're gonna make a new SK sprite node called obstacle, SK sprite node, sprite node color. We're gonna make them red because red is a angry obstacle enemy col color. Um, <laughs> yeah, red color. And we're gonna make them a size of CG size make. Let's say they're gonna be. It's not giving me the template. CG size make. CG size. Uh, let's do 40 by 70. Let's just do that. So now we're going to want to add the obstacles just above the ground of our scene. So. When we set the obstacles position, we're gonna take that into account. So we're gonna do obstacle.position equals CG point make uh, self dot current obstacle X. And here we're gonna do um, the ground dot position dot Y. So now we're grabbing the Y coordinate of the grounds position. We're gonna add half of the grounds height to this because um, the ground's position is literally the center point of the ground node. So we're gonna do plus ground.frame.size.height over two. Um, just so you can see where we're at right now, let's do self uh, add child, oh no, self.world add child obstacle. Oh man, I wanna sneeze here. Um, spring's coming and my allergies are acting up. So, it looks like I typed this wrong here. Let's just, um, one second here. Sprite node with color. I'm not sure, okay, what is this, what's this doing? UI color, red color. Uh, size CG size make 40 by 70. Okay, there we go. Um, just a little compiler for you there. So we're going to run this in the simulator. You'll see that there is where the obstacle is positioned as of now. Now we want the obstacle to actually be above the ground, so we need to add in one more thing to that Y coordinate. It's gonna be plus obstacle.frame.size.height over two. Now, 
This y coordinate may seem like a lot of typing um, just to get a simple y coordinate for the obstacle, but you really get used to this pretty quickly because you have to do this so much. It's just um, this positioning elements becomes kind of second nature the more you actually use it. So um, now if we run this, we will see that the obstacle is actually um, above the ground. Try to hurry this up here. And so awesome, but the hero actually walks straight through the obstacle, so we need to add a physics body to that obstacle. So we're gonna do obstacle.physicsbody equals sk physics body. We've done this a couple times before. Body with rectangle of size, obstacle.size. And um, we want the obstacle not to move when the hero hits it, so we're gonna do physics body.dynamic equals no. So it's going to stay in place um, no matter how um, no matter how much or how fast the hero runs into it, that obstacle is always going to stay in place. Now we had only one obstacle loading up before. We want to do the same thing we did with the ground where we added um, a certain distance to the current obstacle x or current ground x, and so it's gonna keep positioning them as it goes along. So we're gonna do self.obstacle x, current obstacle x, plus equals, let's say, um, 250. So now if we run this, the generate method is gonna be called three times from that populate method. We're gonna get one, two, and three. So now we have our world actually generating. Um, now we wanna keep make it continuous and go along, and I will cover that in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching guys and um, I will see you in the next one.